Hi, my name is Scott Lagan. I'm the author of Digital Art Revolution, Creating Fine Art with Photoshop, a book about using Photoshop as a means of personal expression. The book contains dozens of examples, full color images from some of the most successful and innovative digital artists working today. This video is part of a series of video interviews with artists whose work is featured in Digital Art Revolution, Creating Fine Art with Photoshop. Welcome to the revolution. Today, we're very pleased to have an interview with Stephen John Phillips, photographer of world renown. Stephen, your work is very distinctive as a photographer. What would you describe as some of the defining characteristics of your work? I work primarily with a nude figure. Um, I guess as a style, I, I, I've looked at, and people that inspired me would probably be some of the obvious ones, Joel Peter Witkin, Robert Maplethorpe. But I also am inspired by things, underground comics, Robert Crumb, um, Charles Burns, Mark Ryden. All of those kind of things really, really inspire me. I guess I would describe my style as almost kind of Victorian, and I want them to have that feel of um, almost old freak show. I use a lot of fabrics and velvets and stage looking. I kind of like that performance thing. I'm also really interested in that idea of androgynous figures. I work with the nude for a lot of reasons. Um, I think the nude figure um, tends to create this timeless feel. It doesn't date things. I did a series of pictures um, that was called The Last of the Mohicans, and I used people with mohawks, and a lot of them were my students, but instead of photographing them, kind of I had them take out their nose piercings and their jewelry and everything else, um, and I wanted them to look older. I wanted them to feel more like timeless pieces, so they look a little bit more like some of the old uh, Curtis images of Indians. Um, I'm really interested in that whole idea of not having things be dated. I think the, the idea of photographing the nude is appealing on a lot of levels. Um, it's a very, very beautiful, traditional uh, thing to work with. Um, people are always um, either really interested or put off by the nude. I like that. Stephen, you've worked as a traditional photographer for many years with great success and you've only recently started incorporating Photoshop and a digital technology into your work. Uh, why now, and what benefit do you get from incorporating digital technology into your work? I guess I finally gave in. I fought Photoshop for a long time, you know? It was sort of like, I just didn't have the desire. It was like, oh, people are like, oh, you should put your stuff in Photoshop. And for some reason, I just thought that it wasn't right, you know? And then I started to see some things. I started to see some work out there that I thought, hey, wait a minute, this is really pretty good. I also really like the quickness of it. I like being able to see that instant, immediate result rather than like soup in the film forever. Um, I think probably one of the first things I did with Photoshop was a piece called Penguin Boy, and I had been at a tattoo convention. Um, I'm really into tattoos, as you can see. Uh, I had been to this tattoo convention, and there was this guy there that was in the sideshow performance, and he was swallowing fire, and um, he was picking up weights, but he had a birth uh, defect where basically his um, his hands almost refused to his shoulders. And I thought about asking him. I think he probably would have modeled for me. He had a mohawk and he did these performances, so he obviously was comfortable with his um, handicap. But as soon as I saw him, I thought, oh God, everybody will scream Joel Peter Witkin. So why don't I make my own? So I talked with Chris Shanks, the woman that basically taught me Photoshop, and um, you know, I said, Chris, could we make this? And she was like, of course we can make this. So I think that's what got me started, that whole idea of distorting the figure and, you know, she fused the hands and we created this thing that couldn't really have existed in any, any other venue except for, um, except for Photoshop. You've really embraced digital technology in a number of ways. You have a very popular YouTube channel where people can find out about your work and your ideas about your work. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this uh, social aspect of digital technology 
and how that's affected your, your work. It's kind of like television. Um, I know that I teach with a bunch of people that are very proud of the fact that uh, I don't own a television. It's like, if I were the chair, I would say, you're fired. What do you mean you don't own a television? Um, it's pop culture. Um, digital, YouTube, Facebook, it's pop culture. I've already seen that I haven't been on for, on YouTube for very long and I'm getting all of these subscribers and people are like, hey, let us know the next time you're doing a show. I really think this is the way for an artist to reach out and show his art and I think it's a great way for self-promotion. Stephen, you have a large and eclectic toy collection. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this? Okay, I love toys. I've always loved toys. Um, I collect toys that I like. I take them out of the packet, I play with them, I set them up. Um, I like artist toys. I'm a big fan of Gary Baseman, uh, a big fan of Kozik. Kozik started out doing rock and roll posters and now has moved almost exclusively into toys. I think that's where some of the most interesting art is happening right now in the toy community and that idea of these limited edition artist toys. So do the toys ever become props or inspiration for your photography? The toys do oftentimes become um, inspiration. Not as much props. That isn't entirely true. I've done some things. I made a model of the alien monster one time that was this kind of the face hugger and I actually then used it around a woman's head and on her back and whatnot. So yeah, from time to time I do um, I do use things, but mainly the toys inspire me, and some of them are just amazing, where they'll have multiple arms or multiple legs, or uh, I just love what people can do with them. Could you give us a few highlights of your career as an artist? As far as career highlights, I have been very, very lucky. I have had work all over the world. Um, I was lucky enough to be in um, Marcus Pfeiffer Gallery, who was a big dog in photography many years ago. She was really an important person. I loved being part of her gallery. I had my work included in a number of museum shows. Um, some of the big ones were a show called uh, Splendeur and Mit, I don't speak French, but it translated to the body and its splendor and misery. They did a beautiful catalog. That was at the Museum of Modern Art of uh, the city of Paris, and it also traveled to a museum in Fribourg, Switzerland. Some of my career highlights would have to be the comics. I've done three major um, photographic novels for DC Comics, um, I Paparazzi, um, Veils, um, In the Shadow of Edgar Allan Poe. What are your current plans and projects as an artist? As far as current projects are concerned, I'm really trying to get this book published, um, a 25-year retrospective of my work. It's called Put a Fish in It. I had a, um, a teacher years ago, and he used to say, a space is a place with a fish in it. Put a fish in it. And I was like, what does that mean? Well, basically, he was he was telling people to go out and to take something special and something different and put it in a photograph. So it was like, you know, that's a good spot for a fish. So I sort of took him literally and did a whole series of photographs with actual fish. Is there anything else you'd like us to know about your work? I love photography. I love making pictures. I love getting the props together. I'm full of ideas. I love ideas. I love going to flea markets. I love getting all kinds of props and finding things and putting them together. So, I don't know. I think that if I were probably going to say anything else um, about what I do, um, I think probably the most important images and the best images that I've ever done have been the most personal. Um, like when we got a new dog, I finally saw those dog ears and pickled tails and all those things that dogs ate. And I did a whole series of pictures with pig ears and pig hoofs and things like that. So for me, I think what I'd want you to know is that I work with images that are the most personal that come from me. And I think that's the most and the best place to create our Art, is to create art that revolves around your own life and your own ideas. Don't worry about trying to emulate others. Try and come up with images from your own life. Everybody's got an interesting life and work with those. They're the best. Well said. Thank you, Stephen, for uh, taking the time to do the interview. Okay, thanks a lot.